Well, the parts for the sliding door latch are mostly forged. A few little details to take care of. The general consensus was that people preferred the forged keepers, so I forged three keepers. Still need to put tenons on these, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And the handle itself needs a tenon put on it so that it can go through the slot on the latch bar. So we'll take a look at doing this one and one of the keepers. The other three keepers will look exactly the same. So you can rewind the video and watch it three times if you want to. At this point, we should be able to file this to fit. And we'll take the same approach with the bar for the hasp. And once again, we can clean that up at the bench. At this point, there's a lot of filing to get everything to fit just the way I want it to.
I just spent the last half hour fiddling and fussing with this to make sure that this fits just the way I want it to. Unfortunately, this turns out to be the test piece that I did in the last video and isn't long enough for this latch. So I went through the same process again, and now I have the piece that I want to use ready to go. But before I put the head on this and make this one assembly, I want to do just a little bit of decorative chisel work on the top of the hasp here. I think I'll lay that out cold under the treadle hammer, then we'll heat it up and set it just a little bit deeper. I think the only thing I want to add to the back plates is just a simple forged bevel around the edge. I thought about putting some sort of chiseled in border in, but I just don't think it's going to look right for this piece. This is pretty simple otherwise. So the only ornamentation is going to be that little bit we did to the hasp. I've drilled mounting holes for 5 16 bolts. The time has come to assemble all the components, I hope. Now, the truth is, I will usually allow myself the luxury of welding this using modern techniques. I think it produces a little bit more solid, secure connection with these parts. And it is also less likely to screw things up. These larger keepers have a fair amount of material I'm going to have to rivet over to do this traditionally. And in doing so, it's really easy to screw something up. It's easy to flatten the hole out and make it a little bit of an oval, and then the bar doesn't fit anymore, or it locks up and doesn't slide smoothly, or things get a little out of alignment. There's a lot of abuse going on while you're doing that. And this is bigger than old traditional work. Traditional latches that I've seen generally seem to be a little bit smaller, and were probably made out of wrought iron, which is a lot easier to pin this over and create that rivet head. So there's less abuse going on in all the component parts. The other advantage to welding is that it's easier to get a flush fit in the back that will allow this to sit tight to a door. Doing it this way, we're going to end up with some raised rivet heads on the back, and it's not a big deal. It's good and secure, but whoever does the install is going to need to gouge little recesses out for those to fit in. But nevertheless, we will persevere with forged work and avoid the arc welder if we can. However, when we get to the staples, I may change my mind and I'll explain why when we get to that point.
remember before you put that second keeper in, you got to put the latch bar in place because otherwise you can't get everything assembled. The aluminum vice jaws help prevent gouging the piece as it slips in the vise. They will always slip in the vise. This didn't seat up as well as I would like, so I'm going to see if I can fix it without damaging the diameter of the hole. Looks like everything runs nice and smooth. We got lucky on this. We didn't screw anything up in the riveting process. The aluminum jaws do help hold everything so it doesn't slip so bad in the vise. Next thing is the staples. And I save those to last so I can kind of test the operation and make sure it's going to clear the staple. It really sucks if it kind of binds up on that. It looks like even if I leave these full length, it will clear. I can't think of any good reason to leave these full length, so I'm going to trim them off a little bit. Just needs to be enough room to easily get a padlock in there. So I'm going to run out real quick to the grinder, grind these down a little bit, put a little bevel on them so they're easier to install. Now this is 3 8 hot roll for the staple. I drilled a 3 8 hole. The hot roll is slightly oversized, so that makes this a drive-in fit. That means they should stay in place once we get them fit, and that way they don't slip out while we secure them. I said I'd probably weld these, and I think that's what I'm going to do. And one of the reasons is that they are round bar. They're going to get a rivet head on the back side, but that only holds one side. There's no tenon, so they'd be free to move in and out. And when they're installed, they're up against the door, and that doesn't really matter so much, but they do end up getting loose over time. I prefer them to be good and solid, so I'm going to go ahead and weld these. I'll probably use the torch since I've already got all that set up over there. Your project in your shop your choice. One last quick test to make sure that works. Oh, and it doesn't. See what happens if we drive it through a little further. That works fine. So I need to leave them sticking out at least that far, and I think that's plenty. Now the torch with the rosebud has been running oxypropane, but I'm using oxyacetylene to weld with. Well, what do you know? It works. And I think it'll keep people out of the barn, shed, whatever it is you need to keep people out of. Now somebody's thinking right now, yeah, but they'll just take the bolts out. Well, that could be true, but the kind of person that's going to show up with a wrench is also the kind of person that's probably going to show up with some other tools and find a way in anyways. 
And let's face it, when the FBI comes to raid your place, they're bringing bolt cutters, a cutting torch, and probably an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. This isn't going to keep them out of your barn. So maybe you should think about what you're keeping in your barn. Now I've got this old padlock and I wanted to make sure this was sized in such a way that I could use this on here. And I think that fit is just perfect. That clears the little handle that I left on here. And you can use this then on either side of the door. You can put the keeper on, on this side. Or you can put the keeper on this side. So you got a little bit of an option there on which side you want. And if the door is in the open position, you can hang the lock back on here and nobody's going to close the door when you don't want them to. For whatever reason, you want, might want to make sure the door stays unlocked. Hope you enjoyed this project. Hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.